Today we're going to talk about how much does an estate have to be worth or valued at to go through probate. Now the death of a loved one can be quite devastating and you may have responsibilities while you're dealing with your grief. You must address the decedent's personal property and all responsibilities attached with being responsible for your loved one's estate and this can take quite a bit of effort while you're dealing with your feelings about having lost someone that you really cared about. Now, when someone passes away, one of the first questions is, how do I handle the estate? In California, if a loved one does not have a trust, even if they have a will, you will need to go through probate in most cases. Although probate is basically the same in every state, each state has its own unique rules and procedures. A probate in California has a specific set of rules and procedures that you will have to familiarize yourself with. So it's important that you know the basics about a probate in California. The second question people have once they understand that they are going to be involved with a probate in California is how much does an estate have to be valued at to go through the probate in California? Probate is generally required in California, but there are different types of probates for different types of estates. Let me explain that. Probate is required if the estate is valued at $184,500. And simplified procedures may be used if the estate value is less than $166,250. Now this is highly unlikely and quite unlikely if your loved one had owned real property here in California. A bit of good news is that a probate in California may not be required if the assets are tied to a beneficiary or a surviving spouse. For instance, life insurance policies that have a named beneficiary do not need to go through probate. The reason is they automatically go to the person named in the life insurance policy as a beneficiary and real estate owned by a couple would automatically go to the surviving spouse. Again, California does allow for simplified probate process only if the estate value is less than $166,250. Most people will have a higher valued estate than that amount. If there is no surviving spouse or if the assets were not left to the spouse, in some cases, there would be a probate in California. Dealing with probate in California can be an overwhelming and stressful situation for those that are not familiar with the process, which is most everyone. Having someone that can guide you through the ins and outs of this process could be very beneficial for you. You'll wanna learn everything you need to know, including the cost of having a probate in California. The cost can vary and it can depend on multiple factors such as the location, the county that the property is located in, the estate size, the estate complexity, and the type of estate plan or lack of plan such as is there a will, was there a trust, and there are some other various factors that will be for specific situations. If it is necessary to have probate in California, the question is, what are your next steps and who will be the person that acts as either the executor in the case that there's a will or the administrator when there isn't a will? I think it's important for you to know that the person that takes on the responsibility of the executor or the administrator does not have to live in California. A friend may serve as the executor or administrator. You can have a situation where more than one person serves as co-executor or co-administrator. I don't necessarily recommend it because it makes things a little more complicated, but there are cases where that is the reality. And there are cases where a licensed fiduciary is put in place to act as the personal representative for the estate. Now, another important thing is no one has to serve if they're named in the will. You can decline serving as the executor. The next question is, will the person named in the will accept the responsibility? Will they serve? 
If there is someone named in the will, they do not have the choice of not taking on the responsibility or possibly transferring the, that responsibility to someone else. Usually, the first people that are looked at to act as administrators when there isn't a will are family members and perhaps friends. When there isn't a will, the person that is asked to act as the administrator must be appointed by the probate court in California. There are times when someone does have a will and they don't name anyone to act as their executor because they don't even know that they should be doing that. And sometimes it will be a bank or some type of other individual will be named to act as the executor. It just really depends on each particular case. When there isn't someone that's specific in the will then, the court, again, will appoint someone, typically the nearest relative, to the decedent. All the people that I just talked about that may be appointed as the executor or the administrator, they have a fiduciary duty to the estate and the beneficiaries. They will all perform the same type of duties regardless of how they're appointed. Hi, I'm Charlotte Bulch. I'm a certified probate real estate advisor here in the high desert and also the Inland Empire. So please click the like button and subscribe to this channel, which will broaden the reach to others just like you looking for probate and trust help. Also, leave a comment that I will respond to. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.